Hello, jellyfish artists. We are going to do part one of painting today. Part one of painting is painting in the jellyfish. So you have your photo of your jellyfish in front of you, I hope. Don't just be doing this blindly. You wanna have something to look at. You wanna have your paint brushes in front of you. And today I am using a size 10 of the um, paint brushes that we have. I'm gonna soak it in that water there for a minute and get it going. I'm going to think about the colors I want to use as I look at my photo. You are definitely going to be mixing colors. You are going to be adding lights and darks. You might even be mixing on your jellyfish itself. So this is a painting demo on how to paint in the bell and then the tentacles of your jellyfish. So here we go. My jellyfish is very, very reddish orange, almost some purple shadows and orangish yellow in the lighter areas. So I'm gonna activate the colors that are orange and red, yellowish orange. I'm just gonna go for all of them because I really don't know right now which one I want and I'd rather have them all ready than not enough. I'm also going to add, because it's so reddish, um, a dark red, maybe even some purple. And in this particular jellyfish drawing, I added purple in the oil pastel down here. If I was to put some purple up here in a shadow, it would actually help tie this jellyfish together and make it look more unified as one creature and one organism if it's consistent colors are on the top and the bottom. Just like a zebra has white and black stripes all over it, this would have purple and orange, purple and orange all over it, although it's not the entire picture. So here we go. I've got my colors ready. I am going to first make the lightest color I wanna use, which is gonna be like a yellowish orange. So I add some clean water over here. Start with your lightest color. I'm gonna grab a little bit of yellow. The water that is in the oval, that's what I'm picking up. I'm not necessarily scraping the paint, the paint itself. Okay, that's good. Now I'm gonna add a little bit of this orange. This is like a yellow orange, if you think about it on the color wheel. And it only just made it a little bit more orange. And that's fine, I don't need to go crazy. In the photo, this area right here is where it's most yellowish orange. And there's a little bit on the thinner areas and edges. So I'm gonna take my clean brush. I put some white oil pastel in some of these areas before. And you really wanna be careful to outline just the area you want to paint in right now with your water. There's no need to get it everywhere because you don't want the color to bleed in everywhere. So I'm getting the jellies bell nice and wet. Think of it like a sponge. So if you put some water in the paper right here, that water gets soaked into the paper and then you can actually move your paints on top of it better later because your paint won't just get sucked right into the paper like the paper is a sponge. So you can see it getting darker because it's absorbing water. That's good. Watercolors are some of the hardest paints to use because you really have to develop good control over where they go. You are in charge of steering them in the right direction and you don't want it to go just anywhere. So you really do have to do it right the first time. Take your time, do it correctly. All right, I've got some good water on here now. I'm gonna start applying what is too bright of a yellow, and I know it, to my jellyfish. And you can start to see where my white oil pastel exists because it is rejecting where I am putting the paint. Isn't that great? I know it's so fun to watch to see how your oil pastel comes through. Okay, and like I mentioned, I know that this is too light, but this is kind of the base of what I'm gonna work with. Other colors are gonna go on top of this, and at some point, I might want a little of this to show through, and that's why I'm using it. I 
I can see yellow all the way up to here. It's yellowish orange, but I know and in its root there is yellow because you need that yellow to make the orange that exists in this area. So it just adds more depth, more color, instead of just putting orange on it. You know, anyone can do that. Build up your color, build up your depth. That's what we want to do. What we don't want to do is end up with stripes. If you're seeing stripes or a really strong, like defined line, it means that your paper's not wet enough, so add more water. Okay, now I'm gonna go for the next color. I'm not gonna use this yellow anymore, but what I'm gonna do is add my orange to it. And what you'll see is it'll go from, you know, very yellowish orange to more and more and more orange as I go. All right, now I like this. I'm gonna put this right on top of what I was just painting. And where it is lighter and thinner, more yellow shows through, and that's what I like. This is not going to be as dark as your photo. You're using watercolors. It will not be as dark as your photo. So you just kind of have to accept that to begin with. So please do not try to make it so super dark. If you were using oil or tempera paint, it'd be a different story, but you're not. So just relax with it, have fun with it, move it around, kind of play with it. Hey, guess what? You do not have to make your jellyfish match the photo exactly. If your colors change, it's fine. They can change around a little bit. That is absolutely okay. Okay, I am ready to start adding my darker reddish color. So I'm gonna make some more paint right here. I'm just gonna keep using it. See, this way, you're just using colors that are real close to each other on the color wheel, right? I went from yellow to orange, now I'm going to red. So I'm gonna grab some of this reddish orange first. That's not as reddish orange as I thought it was gonna be. That's more like a true orange. All right, let's grab some red. There we go. That's what I was looking for. I definitely want it to be more deep, more red. This is not the last color we're gonna use either. All right, I hope you're having fun painting. Now, I'm gonna take this. This is gonna go over the areas where I do want it to be darker. And I wanna be careful not to leave big globs of this somewhere. So really make sure you are blending it through as you are working. And make sure your paper is still wet. Sometimes the paper dries up, you gotta add more water like I'm doing right now. So that this darker color doesn't just absorb into one spot and make some weird stripes and lines. We don't want that. We want it to just flow into the color that was down there before. great thing about this jellyfish project is that if you do end up with darker areas of watercolor where it's more saturated with your paint, it looks natural because that's kind of how jellyfish look. And as you learned earlier about jellyfish, if you know about jellyfish, they are like 90% water. That's a lot of water. So it kind of makes sense that we're using watercolor paints to paint something made of water. It does go along with the organic nature of this animal. To use our zebra example again, zebras aren't as much water as a jellyfish and they wouldn't look as much like water when you paint them if you're using you know, watercolors. But with a jellyfish, it does make sense. So that's kind of what's so cool about this project. Okay, now the last thing I wanna do is I wanna get in here with some shadow. So I'm going to add some shadow with some color. I've got some purple here. It's gonna be purplish red. And I'm just gonna put this in, not to make it purple. I'm just deepening the red color I'm making it more deep. I hope that you're learning a whole lot about watercolor while you're doing this. So some places in my jellyfish photo, I can actually see there's these darker spots. 
So that's where I'm putting in the purplish red. And definitely at the bell, there's a lot of shadow up at the top, which is not usual, right? That's usually where the light is. But in this particular instance, that's where it is. So that's why I'm just gonna go for it, put it in there. It is hard to see your color sometimes when your paper is wet because wet paper adds that sort of grayish tone. It makes it difficult to see exactly how it's gonna turn out. That's okay. Do your best. And then when it's dry, check it out. You can always go back and layer more on with watercolor, or you can leave it alone. Just say, you know what? That's just how it's going to look. That's super typical. See what I'm doing? I'm blotching with my paintbrush like this. Blotch, 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 blotch. When you do that, sometimes you get to kind of push the paint into the paper in a more natural way. All right, I'm gonna be honest with you. This jellyfish does not look like the photo, and yet it does. So. It's definitely my own take on how to do the jellyfish belt. Okay, we're gonna stop there and do another video for the tentacles.